here today just a room I'm sorry looks like it's just familiar friends here today did <laughs> <laughs> you say old yeah. I did not sorry. watch it I did not say old familiar familiar friends just a reminder to turn off your cell phone if you will or put it on silent our guest musicians today the Omnitones Matthew 6, 28. Change is growth, and growth is the law of life. Without change, we would not be aware of the marvelous unfolding process that takes place in nature. There would be no fruition, no fulfillment, no satisfaction without change. The hand of God is in every change. In the scriptures, hand signifies intelligence, the power of the mind in action. Our willingness to acknowledge the hand of God Responding for good in every change is a means of walking in the sunlight. There's nothing more crippling than being afraid of changes that come to all of us. While you cower in dread, cosmic intelligence is right there, ready to open unto you a greater good. Doubt not. Change is a sign of growth. Change allows growth. Change reveals the divine plan. Behold, I make all things new. Change is the law of love expressing in the soul of the race, bringing a new and finer development. Welcome the changes that come your way. Give. Acknowledge the hand of God in every change, and observe how God brings to the fore the added blessings, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. I believe that what is going on right now in my environment and my personal experiences <clears throat> is working out in a most satisfactory way, always for good. And our opening hymn today is number one, Abide With Me. We'll sing verses one, two, and three. Hymn number one, Abide With Me, verses one, two, and three. <coughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you go with me going to prayer for just a moment? Father, God, we are in such a beautiful place today. The sun is just beautiful, and we are here to celebrate all that you are. May this music, or word, or smile, help uplift someone, help support someone. May this family of like-minded people help one another. It's in Christ's nature. Amen. 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 Now is the time for our Bible verse, but it seems like we have an undercurrent of joy today. So I'm going to share with you this little story, and I, I know we're going to have a groan after this. <laughs> there was a couple, and I think they're newlyweds. It's Bob and this color Barbara. And it was one Saturday morning, and Bob turned to Barbara, as newlyweds would, and he said, Sweetheart, dearest. You, you do that when you're newlyweds. Sweetheart, dearest. <laughs> why don't you make the coffee this morning? Why don't you brew the coffee? And she was aghast. She says, oh, no, that's the man's job. That's the man's job. And he looked at her and said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, wait just a second. She went into the other room and got her Bible. She came back she said, it says it right here. Hebrews. <laughs> that was the joke. I knew I was going to get that. Oh, Here goes my 20 years at this church. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, 6. Behold, I will bring to you health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. Behold, I bring you health and healing. What a wonderful message. And prosperity and security. You know, I looked in the Bible and I looked and I was trying to look up how many healings did Jesus do? How many were there? And it was innumerable. Not only did Jesus heal, but of course his apostles healed. And even our Melinda Kramer was known for her healings also. And the prosperity and the security. What a promise from God. In divine science, we study, as Reverend Melanie told us a few weeks ago, we study love. And the main focus is our teaching and learning of the omnipresence of God. That's why we're here. Also in fundamentals of divine science, we learn, and I think this is important because we were talking about here in Jeremiah about health and healing, and we learned that we are created in good health. You know, below the surface of whatever might be ailing you, we are created in good health, and we should believe in that instead of the belief that we can be healed. There's a difference. Do you see the difference? We believe in the underlying belief that we are created in good health instead of believing we can be healed. Well, that's how we're going to go forward in the rest of the service today with, a, with an eye towards learning more about divine science and learning more about loving each other. The Omnitudes. Oh, can I interrupt for a second? I am so sorry. I, I forgot the statement of being again. I am so sorry. Please recite with me the statement of beings if you would. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God, and I am ever one with perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Thank you.
popular band in the 1970s, the Atlanta Rhythm Section. And I knew you would know, Dale. And um, they wrote this song about persistence. Uh, everybody's, things are going wrong in your life, you just got to keep trying, even when others seem to not accept what your dreams or aspirations are, you still got to keep trying, and maybe even take a risk or two. Uh, otherwise, the, your dreams will die. The song is called Do It or Die. Sorry. 
before you, whatever your burden may be, prayer can melt it away. Whatever you may lack to make your life complete, prayer can supply. All those words of Emmett Fox ring so true. Whatever we need, we can bring to our Father. Whatever supply we need, bring to our Father. We open our hearts and allow this divine spirit to move within our lives to help us on our path or journey. Father, that you can carry my load. In these next 90 seconds of silence, I ask you just to go deeper within your prayers. Take a deep breath and relax and release into this time with our Father. Starting now. gently come back to the room. Father, Mother God, thank you for this supply. Thank you for leading me and directing me. Thank you that I can turn my troubles over to you. What a blessing. that we are now in a prayerful mood. I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me, the Aramaic. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom is come. Thy will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Thou givest us this day our daily bread. Thou forgive us as our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, thou lead us not temptation, but this deliver us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So, 
It's early in the morning. I want you to come with me if you would. It's about 5.40 in the morning. And we're going to drive into Roanoke. And it's, I, I want you to know I'm going to drive careful so you're okay sitting beside me. <laughs> and we're passing a pasture. It's very dark outside. It's, it's totally dark. And this pasture goes on for quite a ways, and you can see the mountain ridges in the, in the background. And if you look closely, you can see that the morning light was going to give way to some darker clouds. It's going to be a little cloudy today. And you can see the outline of these clouds up there. And if you can look, I just want you to look a little bit past that mountain peak. And you can see just a, a hint of light. Just a, a trace of light in the clouds. That's going to be the promise of our new day. That light coming. In Matthew 5, 14, Jesus said, You are a light unto the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. You are a light into the world. It cannot be hidden. I want you to read with you Genesis 1, if you'll read along with me. When God began creating the heaven and the earth, the earth was a shapeless, chaotic mess. And the Spirit of God brooding over the dark vapors. Then God said, let there be light. And light appeared. And God was pleased. And he divided the light from the darkness. He called the light daytime and the darkness nighttime. And together they formed the first day. Let there be light. Some 13.7 billion years ago, cosmologists and physicists tell us that Big Bang happened. Now what this was, was an explosion of light. There was no mass at this time. There were no planets or meteorites or, or any other mass. It was just an explosion of light. When we know this, we can go back and look at the, the microwave radiation to that, almost that very first light. It still is a background in the universe, this light. They can go back as far as 10, to power of 10 to minus 30 seconds, which is, in our terms, it's one trillionth of one trillionth of one trillionth of a second. They can, they can go back that far and see that explosion of light. Now, as you know, light travels 186,000 miles per second. And I've heard some people say, well, how fast does darkness travel? How fast does that travel? Well, there is no such thing as darkness. It's like when we started the meditation here. Melanie just turned down the lights a little bit. And as she ebbed down the lights, the darkness came into view. But it was only because of the absence of light. If, to give you an idea of this 186,000 miles per second, if you could stand on the equator and you could go circumvent the equator seven and a half times in one second, you're doing the speed of light. That gives us some idea about the speed of light. And in thinking about light for today's message, I thought, well, what about when the the dinosaurs roamed the earth some 65 million years ago. You know, they, they, they postulate that there was a, an event that happened that helped diminish the dinosaurs and, and spelled their doom. And what they do, they, they can prove it now in the Yucatan Peninsula off Mexico. There is a crater some 110 miles long in diameter. 
where they think an asteroid hit that maybe have been about six miles in diameter. That was a big one. And when it impacted, I looked, I looked at the, I wanted to see, well, what's the soil like at this Yucatan Peninsula? What's it like? And it said it's limestone and red dirt. Well, that accounts for a lot. And when this asteroid made impact, a 110 mile crater created everything vaporized and all that <coughs> dust and dirt and debris went into the atmosphere. And it stayed there not for a day or two, a week or two, but for season after season after season. And because of that, the the plant life died, and then the plant eaters died. And when they died, so did the meat eaters. It's amazing how much we need light. And I was thinking about this. This asteroid came from millions of miles away. Millions. And as the Earth rotates, you know, it, it's on its axis, it rotates. If this asteroid had just been three to four to five seconds later, it would have hit out over the ocean. There would have never been all this that happened. Just three to four to five seconds later. That's divine order, I think. That's divine order. I want to tell you about it. I was looking at the light, and there's a celebration of light in India. It's called the Diwali. And it's, a, it's where they, as it starts, I think it's a wonderful celebration. I think we ought to do something like this. It. They celebrate light, love, and joy. And what they do is they they get ready for it. Every household lights a lamp or a lantern or a candle. And then they set off fireworks into the night, one after the other after the other. <coughs> They've been doing that for <coughs> years. And I, they think they know why they set off the fireworks now, probably to get rid of the mosquitoes. So that people could be outside and celebrate. But it's divided up into four days, this festival of lights. And it generally comes in the end of October, 1st of November. It's probably originally was a festival of crops, but today it's a festival of lights. And the first thing they do is they say, give and forgive. That's our first day. Give and forgive. They, they go around and they forgive those that have harmed them or wronged them or they think have wronged them throughout the year. It's a day just to give it all, to forgive everyone. That's how you start your festival of lights. And the next one, I'm not, I don't know if it would go over too big in America. It's called Rise and Shine. It's everyone wake, awakens at 4 a.m. They want to start the day early, go to bed early. I don't think it's really taking hold, though, but they, they do do it on this celebration. The next one is called Unite and Unify. And this is when they, they go and embrace those, they embrace their friends and others, and they embrace them with love, joy, and light. And this next one I thought was very interesting. It's called Prosper and Progress. This is where they, they go out, everyone buys new clothes to look good. And even the employers will go out and buy new clothes for the employees. Prosper and Progress. We want everyone to go along with us. We're all prospering together. And lastly, on the fourth day, it's called Illuminate Your Heart. This is when they let that which is in your heart shine for others to see. Because that is the true light. That is the true light. Just as Jesus said, you are light unto the world. It can't be hidden. 
So they celebrate this true light within them. I was reading some more of Melinda Kramer. I really like her works. And I was also reading a book by Jack Cornfield. He's a, uh, I, you know, I could say a new thought person, but he's a more of a thinking person. He has a lot of Buddhist ideas, as well as divine science ideas. He's very interesting. One of the things I came across is he, he talked about, and I'm just going to pick a few out of here, because you can do your own as to what the light within us is. You probably have your own ideas. When you come to the edge of all the light that you have, and you have to take a step into the darkness of the unknown, know that either one of two things will happen. You will step on a solid surface, or you will be taught by. That's an Einstein quote. You will be taught to fly, or either you'll step on a solid surface. It's an Einstein quote. It reminded me that if we're going to be that light that we should be for the world, we have to have faith. We have to grow in faith. And for me, I have to remind myself of that. Also, on my refrigerator at home, I'll share this with you, I have a, a little caption that sort of says, Doug, I've got it today. This is God. I don't need your help. Faith. Doug, I've got it. This is God. I don't need you today. I can handle it. So we need to grow in faith if you want to become the light into the world that we're supposed to be. Well, another Jack Cornfield thought came to, to my mind, and it sort of is, this is more Buddhist, but it is true for us even today. It's no one can save us but ourselves. No one can. No one may. We ourselves are on our path. We all have our own journey, don't we? I have a tendency, as probably maybe you do too, to, in, in people in your life, I, I want to say, no, you, you need to do it this way. Son, you need, to, you need to do this now. It's time to do this. Everyone is on their own path. And something I've learned is give people the dignity, the very dignity, to make their own mistakes. Give people the dignity to walk their own path. And I believe we can be more of that light to the world like we're supposed to be. <clears throat> Also in this book I was reading about Jack Cornfield, it came to one place, I kind of like this, you, you might not like it, but I thought it was kind of neat. This, it came to a seer, you know, so like someone that knows everything. And this man came to the seer and he said, take these shackles off of me, I'm bound. I'm bound, I did not love like I should have. I wanted to be a writer, not an engineer. Take these shackles off of me. I didn't have the marriage I wanted. I wanted to be so much more. And the seer said to him, you're emancipated. You're free. Who ever found you? Who ever found you? The answer is no one. We do that to ourselves, don't we? We hold ourselves back, don't we? From being all that we should be, from being that light into the world. I want to tell you about Isabella Perilli. She's an 11-year-old girl. She lives in Utah. She has long brown hair. Isabella lost her mother when she was nine years old. Her mother died of some 
a rare brain illness. <coughs> and Isabella gets herself ready for school every morning. Her father's 47 years old, but he goes to school earlier than her, so he's taught her to take care of herself. Like I say, Isabella has this long brown hair. Well, it became all tangled and all messed up. It just didn't look good. So he did what any unthinking father would do. He cut her hair off. Cut it real short. And little Isabella didn't like that. She, she's let it grow back out. And all she can do in the morning when she gets ready for school is to just pull it back in a ponytail. At the beginning of the school year, she was riding the school bus. Tracy Dean is the bus driver. Tracy is the mother of four. She had had breast cancer seven years ago. She has beaten that. She's still living strong. Like I say, she's a mother of four. She's the bus driver. And Isabella saw Tracy Dean, the bus driver, brush another child's hair. And Isabella got up the nerve to ask Tracy, she said, will you brush mine too? And she did. And she put her hair up in braids. Every day this school year, all the other children get off the bus. Tracy Dean, the bus driver, brushes Isabella's hair. Some days she puts it in braids, other days details. And Isabella says, oh, I, I, I look forward to it every day. You know, we, we do something different with my hair every day. And the teachers at school have noticed a big difference in how Isabella presents herself. She's more sure of herself. She fits in better. They say she walks with a quicker step. Jesus said, you are the light into the world. I want you to know that compassion that the bus driver shows to Isabella, that love that is shown there is the light that I'm talking about. That is the light that we have to offer to other people. That compassion, that love, we are a light into the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Will you go in prayer with me now? Father, thank you for the, the very promise of health. Thank you for the promise that we can grow to be that light into the world that we are meant to be. Again, Father, thank you for this service today, the music and the words for this celebration. All is in divine order. Amen. Amen. seem like it's taken forever for the spring season to get here this year. Finally, last week out our way, the sourwood trees and the wisteria, wild wisteria vines in the woods started to bloom, and ah, the sweet, sweet smell of those. Makes you want to sing this Carol, C Carol King song called Sweet Seasons. And oh, yeah. the song is about the seasons of our lives, but it fits really good for next week is going to be a beautiful, beautiful week. So if you know this one, sing it along. There's a horn section in the middle, and our horn section didn't show up this morning, so we're going to play our own horns.
Here's our prayer basket. If you want and if you wish, take the name and pray for that person during the week. Wendy and I make a full jam today. <laughs> Wendy's back there doing jam. I'm up here. <laughs> She's half a jam, I'm half a jam. Take two of us to make a jam. <laughs> She's at the beach sipping um, champagne, <laughs> having a wonderful time. Went, went, went on a uh, picnic on the beach yesterday, just having a marvelous time. Mm. Um, so today is the last day for our ballots, for our uh, selection of uh, two board positions that came open. If you have not done it, the ballot box is over there with the pen and the ballots, if you are a member. Um, you can uh, vote, so we will be looking at those votes today. So, Anne, will we be counting them and letting people know today or next week, next Sunday? Sunday. It'll be next, probably. The, uh, well, actually, it won't be next week. It would be at the annual meeting. We're, we're way ahead of ourselves this year. Usually this doesn't happen until right at the end. But we're, we're actually a month ahead. So, um Anyway, uh, actually that will be announced at the annual meeting on the 20th of May. Um, uh, they're asking for, if you'd like on Mother's Day, to donate $5 in honor of your mother uh, on Mother's Day, which is the 13th of May. If you'd like to do that, then we'll put it in the fundraiser fund. Um, also on Mother's Day, uh, Doug is going to explain to us, because I have no idea what Jan's note meant about this, Instead of a potluck on Mother's Day, the men will be serving the mothers of the church lunch. What does that mean? We're, we're, <laughs> we're going to do the potluck. Oh, oh, wait, the men are cooking? Well, if they can. Or <laughs> they, got, they, can they can go and buy things. <laughs> so we're not supposed to bring any potluck items exactly. either. It's just the guys who are doing Oh, I thought you were going to serve us our own lunch. Okay. <laughs> it's just Rick, Jury, and, and uh, that know about it. We'll, okay. Okay. So if any other men in the church would like to participate? <laughs> now, if I were y'all, I'd bring a bag lunch. <laughs> okay, so this, there's this, actually there's a sign up, um, a Mother's Day sign up actually, I put one in the, uh, in the annex over there if you, you'd like to sign up so we'll know how many people are coming, so how much chicken and dumplings you have to bring, <laughs> or sandwiches or whatever you're going to be serving. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that will be a very uh, interesting experience, I think. It should be fun. Um, oh, actually, that's it. Okay. Let's raise our voices one final time. Our hymn is on the wall. God in everything. <laughs> 